So I think the mistake people make though is like, I want to avoid all sugar. Like I'm not going to eat any fruit. Like fruits are just bags of sugar I've heard before. Yeah, a lot yes. of people have said that. And a lot of people try to steer away from eating fruit nowadays because of that, especially even people that are, you know, trying to bodybuild or doing that sort of yeah. stuff. They're almost afraid to right. eat those sugars and eat those things. But you take so. an apple, it might have 15 or 18 grams of sugar, but again, you're getting fiber. Fiber has health benefits in terms of not only slowing down the the hit of the blood sugar but it's good for the microbiome there's vitamins and minerals in it you've got polyphenols polyphenols these compounds in plants that are colored that are going to have other health benefits like antioxidant potential so like avoiding avoiding fruit out of fear that contains sugar it's like a misstep because then yeah you know, you're just not going to get like a balance of foods that you need. You're missing out all the plant-based nutrients. So like yeah. that's the one yeah. thing. It's like the benefits of all the things in an apple or a blueberry outweigh the small amounts of yeah. sugar well said. that are really not going to cause any issues in the body. And you're getting so all those nutrients you just mentioned, those are so crucial for the the eyes, the brain, the heart, circuit, all the organs of the body. You know, this is what the point of food is. <laughs> so the other thing the you body. mentioned, Madison, was like, you know, activity and when is it okay? So I think it's good to maybe talk about the context of, we talked about the context of foods. Let's talk about the context of activity. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, when I think about activity, I start to think about, you know, sports, drinks, and then I start to think about what kind of sugars are in there. And, you know, I hear about maltodextrin. So let's talk a little bit about, like, we're, we're athletes, we work out. You know, when you're working out, your body behaves to sugars totally differently, right? It's like a different chapter in the textbook because your body's like producing insulin, your muscles are working, they need blood sugar. So like that's the time to have actually quite a bit of sugar. Tour de France guys are eating like over 100 grams of sugar per hour and they want it to be the most glycemic possible sugar. So it's glucose, it's fructose, it's maltodextrin, it's these kind of maltodextrin polymers with branches in them. Like that's the goal. So again, it's really context dependent. So again, if you're sitting at your desk, try to reduce, you know, sugar, sweetened beverages. But if you're being active, like this is the time to have it. It's also producing insulin, like you said, Luigi, which is the build hormone. So that's required to build muscle, Absolutely. right? So like, you know, there's, there's kind of some pros, like oh, is there some sure. benefits to it? Um, so yeah. hopefully that kind of puts that in context. Yeah, and, so yeah. not all sugar is bad sugar. No, absolutely. Really? And, and he yeah. just mentioned maltodextrin and some of these other sort of carbohydrates that people may see on the label. This is a great example, especially in sports, people who are, just folks who are active. I think the first part, the first point that John made is it's the amount. So even if you see a small amount of maltodextrin on the label, it's really not going to have a major effect in terms of blood. That was the whole baby carrot example, right, that we've discussed. But also, if we're going to use the example of a, a car, we've been talking about this theme of a car and you're putting gasoline in. Now, with a Tour de France rider, you're really just revving that. You're out, out taking the car out on the track now. And so you got to have fuel in the car constantly if you want it to function and perform on the track. So I think there's different levels of what the human body needs. Luigi, you mentioned the maltodextrin and like yeah. this one, this <laughs> one's actually really interesting yeah. because I think maltodextrin has been vilified. It's like, oh, I can't pronounce it. It sounds like a, you know, food industry, big food product. I kind of doing that for a little bit of effect, right, but right. maltodextrin is literally just a chain of glucose right. and your body, like it's, it's been designed to metabolize glucose really efficiently. So it's good for the brain. It's good for athletes. Maltodextrin is a, a long chain of it. And the way it works in your gut, it's really beneficial. It has a bad rep because it's high glycemic. Right. And then for some reason, like people are like, oh, it's, it's not healthy. If you see maltodextrin in a supplement, you know, a tablet or a capsule, there's probably like a hundred milligrams or 200 milligrams. It's like far less than a gram. It's way less than a single calorie, which is like, I don't know, maybe 30 seconds of walking. Like it's an insignificant amount of calories. It's an insignificant amount of like blood sugar. So to your point, yeah. it's high glycemic, but there's no impact or like a negligible impact on blood sugar because there's so little maltodextrin yeah. in there. It's so a tiny, tiny. And you know, I always, I always like to tell folks, cause we like to educate on this is, 
it comes from plants. Generally, you know, you can source it from plants. You can kind of t- think of a like in one of your favorite plants, and you kind of shred it up, and you're creating a little powder. Mm. And maltodextrin. Now, I'm not trying to here to promote it and, yeah, and sell, yeah. but it, it's it's really cool because it's a nice way to bind stuff together. And John touched on these phytonutrients, these these cool plant botanical chemicals that are naturally. You can take those and you kind of stick them to maltodextrin, and that's how you can make like. You know teas or any types so there's a there's a functionality i think that john is speaking to that you can have small amounts for functionality in supplements and it's really not going to affect yeah. anyway i mean i think the thing is like look we, we work for like a you know a, a big company like i'm not here to promote like the big food stuff right. but i think mm-hmm. the point is like there's only so many things you can worry about in your mind right, and right, the right. list of things i'm worried about a little bit of maltodextrin in supplement is so far right, down. Right. I'm worried small, about like don't sweat the small stuff. Don't sweat the small stuff. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, that's yeah. my take home message yeah, here. So yeah, totally. But you talk. Yeah. Um, you were talking about like the the plant derived or the unrefined sugars. Like, is that yes. a question you guys get? Yeah. Like, is there anything better? Like, what's better? Like unrefined plant sugars. Like, what's what is the mm. best for your body? And like, is there even a good one for your body? And is that essential for athletic performance? Mm. Since we were talking about, you know, the role of muscle last time and those different things. So definitely. Yeah, I would go back to John's example of the kombucha. You know, if you're getting the benefits of the kombucha. But if there's some things where you look at a food label and they're just loaded with a bunch of additional sugar, then that's probably not going to be great for the body because it's going to throw you in a little bit of like, it'll, it'll, your body will be like, whoa, metabolically, this is a lot of loading. But if you have foods that have the balance, the fiber, remember, remember, if you're having something with fiber protein, the body's got to do work, then I say kind of disentangle, to break those pieces up to metabolize them. And that's, that rise of, of, of uh, blood sugar is going to be very slow and sustained. And that's a good thing. So now, obviously, we, we don't want to have a huge load of carbohydrate. No one's trying to advocate for that. But small amount... Unless you're riding in the Tour de France, like yeah. like Dr. John here, you're not going to really need that much carbohydrate. Well, I think I think like the other thing I see is, um, you know, people are like, oh, I'm, I'm using agave syrup or I'm using date paste, and like there's this misconception that like those are different or healthier. But like if you think about like agave syrup, the reason it's low glycemic, it's actually like predominantly fructose, which is low glycemic. So like I feel like there's this. Um, like you kind of take your eye off the ball, like, oh, right. don't worry about the sugars. Right. Buy my agave syrup date. It's all, you know, some plant derived thing. It, it actually behaves no differently in your body. So there's a little bit of like kind of some marketing deception I see right, kind of pervasive right. on the social media. So I guess what sounds like what you're saying, John, is sugar is sugar is sugar. Mm-hmm. And the body, it's the amount we need to be conscious of. And it's the variety of things that come with it in our foods and supplementation. Right. So, so to wrap that up, Luigi, yeah. I think it's like the amount. Right. It's if you if you have fat and fiber and protein together with it, that's mm-hmm. really good. And then if you're being active, Even as long better. as your movement, yeah. you're like so, so. I think those are the three things to, for the people to take home on this, on this episode. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you guys. That was amazing. Um, and on next episode, we're actually going to talk about how reducing fat is more than just aesthetic. So if you guys are excited about finding out how to reduce fat, that's way more than just aesthetics. And it's all about all these amazing things we were talking about. Stay tuned because we have an awesome episode coming next.